James asks, store value in a volatile market. My smart friend says that the biggest barrier to mass adoption is price volatility, which limits Bitcoin's use as a store of value, its most convincing use case to date. It's a lousy store of value if the price keeps changing. Is this right? Are there other obstacles to mass adoption? What are they, in your opinion? James, um, your friend may be smart, but I don't think they understand some of the basic economics at play here. So, first of all, I don't think price volatility really affects Bitcoin's use as a store of value. Store of value is definitely a long-term perspective. It certainly affects Bitcoin's use as a medium of exchange. But as a store of value, you know, if you are buying and investing in Bitcoin and using it as a store of value, then you have a long-term perspective, certainly more than a year. Um, how's Bitcoin doing in the last year? Oh, it's um, it's up about 600 percent. Sounds like a pretty good store of value to me. Um, over the last three years, definitely pretty good store of value. Uh, if you look at it over three months, it's probably not a good store of value. But that's not what store value means. Store value is definitely a long-term perspective. The other thing about this is that it's a bit of a circular argument, because volatility really is an expression of size. Um, for example, in a follow-up question, James said, we tend to harbor an expectation that this volatility a key obstacle to Bitcoin's wider success, will eventually calm down. But Bitcoin's resistance to regulation is a feature, not a bug. So where will the stability come from, absent of mass adoption and absent of regulation? I think there is a broad misunderstanding about how volatility is dealt with in capital markets and currency markets. Uh, the idea that regulators control volatility in a currency I think, is uh, an illusion. Regulation doesn't control volatility. If anything, regulated markets that don't have enough flexibility and liquidity are more volatile. Um, I would say the biggest, the biggest um, contributor to volatility is the small size of a currency. And you've got to understand that Bitcoin is currently traded on a global basis. Unlike most other national currencies that have primarily domestic markets, uh, Bitcoin is a global market, and for a global market, it's tiny. It really is absolutely tiny. $100 billion is nothing in currencies, even for a currency that's only domestic, let alone for a currency that's traded globally. So this kind of sounds like a circular argument. It's basically saying the biggest barrier to mass adoption is the lack of mass adoption. And if only there was more mass adoption, then there'd be more mass adoption. Uh, the biggest barrier to Bitcoin being big is that Bitcoin is small. And if only Bitcoin was bigger, then it could be bigger. Because that's what price volatility is. It's that this currency is small. And so if the fact that it's small is a barrier to it becoming big, that's kind of circular logic. As Bitcoin gets bigger, volatility goes down. As the market becomes more liquid, as it is traded more and used for different purposes and not just speculation, I think that reduces volatility. The more companies depend on Bitcoin as an input, or use it for payments to contractors or providers, or um, hold inventory and purchase things based on Bitcoin, or sell things based on Bitcoin, the more the price uh, volatility is reduced. Right now, it's mostly used for speculation. It's mostly dealt with as a short-term basis. It's traded globally in a wide open market, and as a result, it's quite volatile. So yes, um, Bitcoin will become less volatile as it grows, or at least I certainly hope it will. I think the economics would argue that. Ash asks. Do you believe there are cartels in the crypto space? There is lots of noise about Bitcoin being manipulated and such things. What do you think? I think the lady doth protest too much. Um, what I would say is I wasn't hearing a lot of complaining about uh, Bitcoin being manipulated when it increased five, six, eight, a hundred, a thousand percent in six months. Um, there wasn't much 
complaining about manipulation and pumping and uh, all of that when the price was going up by a factor of 10. Now that the price is going down, for obvious reasons, anything that goes up a thousand percent in six months is bound to have a correction. And I had started calling for a correction in October of uh, last year, and saying that these prices are unsustainable. And I got um, quite roundly bashed for that, for being a naysayer and um, um, a negative Nelly and all of that. But the point is that anything that goes up a thousand percent is likely to have a correction at some point. If it goes up too fast, it's going to come down even faster. Uh, as they say in trading, what goes up on an escalator comes down on an elevator. And in this particular case, now we have a lot of people going um, going on about how Bitcoin is being manipulated by whales, by the futures market, by um, world governments trying to uh, dump uh, crypto holdings in order to tank the market, etc., etc., etc. But the truth is that if you look at the broader market, it's not just Bitcoin. There's been a massive correction in tech stocks. There's uh, there's been uh, massive corrections in stock markets around the world. There have been massive corrections in uh, currencies, and um, now there are also massive corrections happening in crypto. And this is, I think, a natural response to a market that got over exuberant with too much excitement. Too many people bought Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, not because they believed in or understood the value of the technology, not because they thought this technology was going to have a great potential for future returns, but they thought that they would get rich in a matter of months uh, simply by buying into a fad. That is a great to fool theory. That is not a good basis to invest in. And so when people were asking me, um, you know, Bitcoin sixteen thousand dollars, should I buy now? Uh, I honestly told people, you know, your strategy should be based on dollar cost averaging and figuring out what you're comfortable with and understanding the technology. And the more you understand the technology, the more comfortable you should be about your investment decisions. And if you're asking me, and I'm not an investment advisor, then you shouldn't be buying this stuff. Um, so yeah, I don't believe there are cartels in the crypto space. Um, do I believe there's manipulation? Sure, absolutely. Do I believe that there's various pump and dump schemes and whales trying to manipulate the price and um, completely irrational buying, completely irrational selling that's pushing the price around? Absolutely, all of that is happening. But that's not the reason that the price is crashing. Um, and I think trying to find causation in these markets is a fool's game. It's like reading tea leaves or predicting stock prices based on the alignment of the zodiac. <laughs>